Welcome to the Millennium Marriage Podcast, where we discuss practical tools and insights into the joys and challenges of marriage. (laughs) Welcome back, everybody, to the Millennium Marriage Podcast. We are back for another wonderful week. Yes. We are going to be discussing building trust. Yeah, man. That is key in any relationship. Every one of them. Not just why you got this hood on your head. I don't know. It got on and then it's I making just, me not trust you. I'm like, feeling a little like uneasy. The, like you're you like the what? The vibe. I'm like a superhero with my hood on. You look like you're it's like, like it's like Robin Hood. No. She's a hater. You look like you like I don't know. I don't know. I watch too much Dateline. She's a hater. I just watched an episode the other day, and the guy was like creeping on the side of the store with his hoodie on, like waiting for a lady to come out. And that's the first thing I thought of. But anyway, back to what we were talking about trust. Mm-hmm. <laughs> building it. How do we build it in our relationships? Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, we're building it before we get married um, and establishing that foundation before we're married. But, mm-hmm. you know, for our listeners who are dating or engaged or married um sometimes we're still establishing that trust and uh yeah. trying to figure out what that means to each of us yeah right Some, i mean sometimes you may have built that trust and uh it's some form of infidelity it might not even have been infidelity it could have been anything can destroy that trust mm-hmm. uh, i i think we've we discussed something along the lines before and i said um you know trust trust is like your credit score you know you can have amazing credit and that you did everything right your entire life and you make one mistake and that score just just (laughs) shoots down that's that's a good analogy yeah trust is kind of the same way you know you can go for years and years and years and years building this trust up and and everything is great and then you know a lapse in judgment or just anything that yeah you know could break that trust and it's so hard to to rebuild rebuild it yeah so with that said we're probably gonna need to break this conversation up a little bit Mm -hmm. i mean because this is kind of a a wide range when it comes to this topic so many different things we could touch on um today we want to focus on trust what is trust how do you build trust and then next week we'll probably go a little deeper into like when that trust is broken Mm -hmm. how you reestablish it how you rebuild it so let's start off with a quick definition of what trust is so one that we found and thought was good was it says firm belief in the character, strength, or truth of someone or something. Um, I thought that was really good because it talks about um, the strength of your belief. Mm -hmm. Um, And it talks about the character of what or who you're believing in. Um, And I think that really sums it up right there. You know, um, you can love someone and befriend someone, um, care about someone and not trust them. Yeah. Because, you know, you can love them as a person. You know, we're called to love each other, even our enemies, right? We may not trust our enemies <laughs> because of things we've witnessed, because their character has shown us that we shouldn't or can't trust them, right? So trust is definitely earned. Um, and it's definitely something that you have to be intentional about building, right? It doesn't just show up because you say you're in a relationship with someone. You don't just automatically day one that you friend or um, become boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband, wife. It doesn't just happen. Um, It's an intentional process that, you know, I think we all have to find our path in that. Um, Every relationship is different. Um, and then Go ahead. it means something different. Trust means something different to s- different people. Yeah. I mean, there's a general consensus of, you know, what your character represents, but there are certain, um, there are certain things that 
may happen that I may feel like you broke my trust or, you know, I, I'm not as open to trusting you because of it, whereas you may not think it's a big deal and vice versa. So it's based off of, you know, our experiences. Yeah. I think it just off of what you just said, um, especially when you're in a relationship, if your significant other did anything or said anything that that damaged that trust mm -hmm. that maybe have broken that trust if they're not fully aware of what it did that offended you and did that the trust that that broken that broke that trust if they're not aware there's nothing that they can try to repair they don't understand mm -hmm. they don't know so i think it goes back that that aspect goes back to communication, just being able to freely communicate when mm -hmm. that happens. Yeah. You know, put it into words. And so that person can try to repair right. what it is that they did. Um, it also the trust is like it's so delicate because in that same manner of how you said something could have happened and it broke that trust. Like, like she said that what may have happened and broke the trust for her may not be something that would break the trust for me because we're all different. It's, it's, it's such a delicate concept. Right. And, and we always got to be aware of the things that one that we're saying, the things that we are doing, the things and thinking in our minds when we, especially when we're married, is this something that is going to damage the trust between me and mm -hmm. my wife or me and my husband? Um, I know for me, for us early on, it was, I think you trusted me, but I still had walls up. So I didn't fully give myself to you, mm -hmm. which then in turn made you feel like, almost like I wasn't full, I wasn't worthy of your full trust mm -hmm. because I didn't open up to you right. in that manner. Right. Um, and I think once I did, which you told me, you know, we had conversations and you're like, you're not fully, you know, I don't have all of you. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's hard for sometimes, sometimes for, for men, I know it was hard for me to fully be vulnerable with you. Yeah. Because growing up, it was like, I'm the man, you know, we we literally just had this conversation that you've never seen me cry. And it's just, you you get, you've raised a certain way or, and it, it's not even raised a certain way, but it's what I saw. So I see my father as this strong, strong man. man that just, did whatever for the family, took care of the family, showed no emotion. It was very rare that I saw emotion. Um, so that's what I thought a man is. And then I put these walls up to, to not allow that emotion to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and the, they possibly could still be there because I don't I, might be something wrong with me. I can't cry. I, just don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, but it took time. It took for me to freely be open with you and vulnerable for mm -hmm. our trust to grow to hopefully where it is today. Yeah. And, you know, you said something about being aware. Um, and that's one thing we have to think about is being aware of and being able to identify those experiences that have shaped the way that we trust. So, you know, if there are certain experiences that I've had that because you have that wall up, you know, mm -hmm. take me back to, you know, it's like re-traumatizing me in that area that I was hurt before. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is that is really key in making sure that you're able to grow um, in trusting each other is that you identify what those experiences were so that, like you said, we can communicate it to each other. Because there's going to be some things that may happen that could trigger experiences that you've had in the past. But like you said, if that person isn't aware, you know, and if you haven't 
identified those things to move on from them and to actually heal from them. Even if he knows about it, if I'm still broken from that experience, there's a trigger that's gonna, you know, pop up and cause other issues and cause me to step back and not trust even more. So again, back to our communication, um, we have to be able to um, identify those things that have happened to us in the past in previous relationships um, within our family, friendships. Um, You know, a lot of times it's just like, whatever, it don't bother me. I'm over it. I don't care. But deep down, you do care. You know, we carry this bitterness inside of us. And instead of dealing with it and addressing, why did that hurt me so bad? Um, have I had a conversation with that person to talk about the way they hurt me? Because a lot of times those experiences we've had, those people don't even realize that they hurt us. But here we are carrying it into our next relationship and end up, unfortunately, punishing the person in the relationship we're in for something that somebody else did or that we perceived that somebody else did. Because sometimes they didn't really do anything or they don't know that they did anything. It's just we took offense to it. Mm -hmm. And that hurt us and that caused us to be um, leery about trusting other people. So we have to make sure we're identifying that and not holding those past hurts against our partner. Giving them the opportunity to come in and show us, you know, what it feels like and what it means to fully be able to trust someone. But um, we can't withhold that trust out of fear that it's going to happen again because that is going to keep your relationship stagnant. Um, that is not going to allow room for growth for either of you. You'll be hindered. The yeah. whole relationship would just be hindered by that hold that is over. You mm-hmm. know, what I, mean? mm-hmm. um, I think trust, and we we were discussing in our you know our relationship in a marriage relationship in a relationship between couples, um, but trust is also with our children. You know, our children have to know that they can trust us. We're still trying to build our trust up with our children mm-hmm. as well. Um, you know. So there's not a dictatorship. Yes. You know, I mean, listen, sometimes it is what it, it is. is. No. It's what I say it. That's it what is, it is. It's a dictatorship, but. right? But <laughs> I think it's a dictatorship that allows communication, that allows talking with some flexibility. and some flexibility and I mean, if you can sell me on what you're trying to say, okay, mm-hmm. you might got me. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times you're not going to sell me. I'm going <laughs> to listen to you, but it's not going to work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that trust is also something that needs to be built. And it's built similarly, you know, because we we parent and we teach the same way, a lot of times the same way that we were. And that's not always the way it should like, be. Do you mean the same way that we, that were, we were taught? we were raised and taught mm-hmm. and, you know, and that's not always... Sometimes we have to adjust. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, we discussed that before, you know, breaking that that cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, but that also leads to building that trust and yeah, that's what we need in yeah. our relationships. So with that, you know, as we talk about with our children um, as well, I think a key element of building trust is establishing a sense of security, establishing a safe space Mm -hmm. um, for communication, for us to be vulnerable with each other. Like if I'm having a challenge or if I have an issue with you or something that happened or anything like that, I have to be able to openly communicate the way I'm feeling, the way it made me feel, the way you made me feel, how it hurt me without fear of repercussions. Mm -hmm. Or fear of offense. Yep. You know, because we, we're all human Mm -hmm. and we can be very quick to offense. And when I say offense, I mean to be offended, Mm -hmm. you know, the slightest things is like, oh, no, they didn't say that to me, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like. Or it's like, you know, if I'm communicating and not you, but just right. saying in general, if we're communicating something to someone that upset us or hurt us um, and they look at it like they're being attacked. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
it's really important for each of you, each of us to establish that safe space and goes back to humility. You know, we have to be willing to hear the things we don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. We have to be willing to sit back and listen because whether, no matter how right we think we are, your perspective is not the only perspective. Or what, what was it that Keon said? Your perception is not always reality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your, um, the way you see it may not be how it came across because of your tone. Right. Or, you know, the way I see it, I may have gotten offended, but you were just saying a statement. Yep. You know what I mean? And I took it one way, but you really didn't mean it that way. Um, so in those simple things, it's like, you know, we have to be able, in all things really, but mm -hmm. especially in those, like if I can't come to you about something simple that you said that hurt my feelings and express that and we talk through it and move forward and adjust the way we communicate with each other because of that, then how am I going to come to you with the big stuff? Right. I won't feel safe. Like even if it's not just me addressing something you did, if it's something that I did and need to confess to you or need to address with you or need to apologize for if when I came to you with a simple thing of, babe, like, I really didn't like the way you said that the other day. It really hurt my feelings. And then you go off the handle, you know, then when it comes to, babe, we got to talk. That talk, I'm not coming to you. Right. Because I couldn't come to you with the small things. So mm -hmm. how can I come to you with the big things? Right. So establishing that that safe space is really, really important really something that we really had to pray about, mm -hmm. you know, and, and grow and experience those times where the space wasn't safe, right. you know, and I don't mean safe, like physically, mm -hmm. I mean, safe, like emotionally where I can be vulnerable and share my heart and share my thoughts. And same with you where, you know, there may have been times where you tried to do that. And I just, everything was about me. Oh, I, you know, it's because of me. It's because of this. And, and I didn't give you space to just share how you were feeling that had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Even if it did have something to do with me, all I heard was that attack and what I'm not doing right. Um, so then I was shut down, you know? So it's just, that's just really important. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, knowing that that we have each other's back mm -hmm. will help build a lot of trust. Oh, yeah. Knowing that we are a united front all the time. No matter what. A hundred percent of the time. When we are, if someone is in, in front of us, we are a united front. It doesn't matter. And even if we don't agree, we're still united. We're not gonna we're not gonna change that. We might afterwards when it's just us two together be like, hey, listen, man, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I had your back, but you were wrong. Or, mm -hmm. you know, could have handled that differently. Mm -hmm. Um, knowing that just really just increases the trust because it be it it almost allows you to see that it's a safe space. Right. When you're in the presence of each other, it's a safe space mm -hmm. because we always are united. We're always one. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's a good one. And living that out too. Like we can say, oh, I got your back. You know what I mean? But if I'm in a situation with my best friend and they're, you know, disagreeing, am I going to like be like, oh, babe, just let her go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Type of thing. Or am I going to like stand strong and be like, listen, I love you. You're my best friend, but this is my husband. This is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and not in a disrespectful way, mm -mm. but it's just respectfully, this, respectfully hashtag. We need those t-shirts B. <laughs> um, you know, just, just always, um, showing that this covenant mm -hmm. stands ahead of anything else yeah. that is going to attempt to come in between us. Yeah. And that may not be the goal for it to come in between us. It could be something minute that really has nothing to do with our relationship. But the animosity in those moments will weasel in between us and create friction and create cracks in the level of trust that we do have in each other if we aren't united, mm -hmm. you know. So that's really, really important. Um, that and, and not 
just that we have each other's back. Like you said, between us, even with our kids, we talked about that in the parenting episode, but that other people notice mm-hmm. and other people understand. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it, sis. Don't do it, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And that that comes with the way that we carry ourselves in front of other people, the way that we honor each other in front of other people. Like, and we've heard this before, like when people see the way we are with each other, um, it shows them who we are as a couple. Mm-hmm. And it also shows them that, listen, don't need to, don't need to take it over there. Like there are boundaries that we've established that people know, like whatever it is that's going on outside of here, whatever, but this is it. You know what I mean? So um, it's really important to, to honor each other, um, not just behind closed doors, but to honor each other in public and around others, because that builds trust as well. And me knowing that regardless of what the situation is, like he's always going to be there for me and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So listen, I put these paws on some people. I'll tell you what, mess with her. Boy, take this hood off. It's bumping you up. Take mm-hmm. that hood off right now. The <laughs> same. I mean, that is true, but <laughs> I'm saved and all. But don't mess with my baby. Oh, thanks. That's so cute. <laughs> so, regarding trust, this is a big one, right? Being faithful when it comes to our romantic, marital, engagement all of those relationships right being faithful is probably the first thing that comes to people's minds when they think about trusting someone um trusting them with their heart trusting them you know in marriage with their bodies um being completely and fully vulnerable um understand this though being faithful in a relationship is about more than the physical aspect Mm -hmm. Cheating is not just physically going outside of your marriage, your relationship, and having a sexual encounter with someone or physical encounter with someone, okay? Being unfaithful also means in sharing your emotions with other people and sharing certain time with other people. Not all of your time. I mean, I love you, but we'll need to be together all the time and doing everything together. But there are intimate moments that you should only be sharing within your relationship. You know what I mean? Um, Unfaithful in sharing your finances with someone outside of your household, your relationship that your spouse doesn't know about. Um, Faithfulness comes in many different forms. Um, And I think that's really important to point out because, you know, some people will be like, oh, it was only this. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was only that. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that the covenant that you made, the agreement that you made before God, you went against that trust um, and made a decision that didn't align with what's included in your covenant. Right. So that's really important to keep that in mind. Um, Just because you haven't physically touched or been intimate or, you know, connected with someone does that mean that you're being faithful? Yeah. So um, I don't know how deep I want to go into this because, you know, that can go into a whole nother episode, Mm -hmm. but just something to keep in mind, you know, and it's really important for us to be aware of those things, um, to guard our heart with who we are communicating with, how we're sharing and what we're sharing things with um, other people. Um, whether it's in a workplace or friends or whatever, we come into contact with people every single day. Mm -hmm. We're not always going to be next to each other. You know, we're not always going to be in a setting where they know you're married, even though bling, bling, like, you know, you know, but people try to act like they don't see it. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, I was watching, was Michael Todd? I think it was on Sunday. And he was, when he was talking about, um, he was talking about baptism. And talking about how it is an outward declaration of an inward decision, right? Um, And he said, you know, it's like in marriage where you have made an inward decision. The covenant that you made between us and God was an inward decision that you would be faithful to me. You would love me through sickness and health and all of that stuff. So that inward decision does not change, Mm -hmm. right? But this is a visible representation of that inward decision. But people will still 
see this and act like they don't have no sense. It's up to us, along with that inward decision, to make an external decision, um, to be confident in making good choices that are going to align with that covenant, regardless of what anybody else does. Right. You know, we have to hold ourselves, we have to hold each other accountable for those decisions that are made. Because again, we meet people every day. We're all in environments where we could easily slip up and do something we know we're not supposed to do. It is an intentional decision to make sure that we're making those decisions that are going to honor our spouses, our significant other, um, and being mindful of those things. Yeah. It goes right back to that whole thing, you know, if when you when you are in the middle or thinking about anything that you it's oh it should always be a thought of is this going to break my trust that I that my my wife or my significant other has mm -hmm. with for me, with me, you know, that bond is this decision going to hinder that in any way. Yeah. So it's always, you know, it's almost like that what would Jesus do, you know, before you make a decision, you know, it's the same concept when it comes to your marriage and your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot, mm -hmm. but I, I still don't think we kind of, we, well, I think we graze the surface oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. of a lot of this. Um, but we just wanted to kind of share, you know, our thoughts on the idea and concept of trust. Um, to help people really just work through some things. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we had to figure a lot of it out the hard way yeah. and we're still figuring it out. It's not Absolutely. all figured out. It's never all figured out. It's always um, constantly working and improving. Um, but some of these things that we talked about, we didn't understand in the beginning. Nope. So we had to, um, we had to go through some valleys. We had some mm -hmm. peaks too and valleys um, to really get an understanding for how to build trust with each other and what that meant with each other yeah, and how to be vulnerable with each other. And so with all that said, we hope that this has helped someone, um, whether it's, you know, you're just starting out in a relationship or you're already in a relationship and just wondering why certain things you're still having a hard time with you know, putting trust in someone in a certain area. Um, and now you realize you're able to, you need to kind of look back at some of your experiences that have brought you to the place where you're at, where it's difficult for you to trust someone. Yeah. So with that said, listen, we'll be back mm -hmm. to get a little deeper into this. Talk about the other side of that, you know, okay, you've built the trust and all of that, but then it's broken. So where do we go from there? So tune in next week mm -hmm. so that we can catch up on that. And yeah, that's it, right? That's it. All right. We look forward to the next episode. See y'all later. See you. Oh, wait. We don't want to see y'all yet. Because no. I didn't say until next time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Continue to invest in each other for a marriage that lasts a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now we'll see y'all. See you. If you enjoyed our podcast, please subscribe and share. Keep up with us on social media at Millennium Marriage and visit our website at millenniummarriage.com.